Colorado's statewide snowpack is off to a terrific start, with the state snowpack levels sitting at about 120% of their season-to-date averages as of this week. But we're only about halfway through the snow season. So we spoke last week with Colorado Assistant State Climatologist Dr. Becky Bollinger for more about the fast start to the winter season in the mountains and what it means for the spring, summer, and beyond. We're now joined by Colorado Assistant State Climatologist Dr. Becky Bollinger from Colorado State University. Uh, Dr. Bollinger, as always, thanks so much for joining us here on 90s Plus. Thanks for having me, Chris. Um, all right, so I guess we're, uh, I guess the big overall question I would have for you is where do we stand on snowpack so far this season? Yeah, uh, depending on where you look around the state, we've got some excellent numbers, uh, particularly everywhere west of the divide. Uh, most of our basins are looking at above average for this time of year. Uh, we've had consistently good snowpack in uh, the Yampa White Basin, the Northern Rockies, uh, around the Colorado headwaters and that main I-70 corridor and in the Gunnison Basin. Uh, things about a month ago were probably a little bit lower in the San Juan Mountains in southwest Colorado, but these recent storms have really helped to boost them to above average. And east of the divide, uh, the South Platte Basin, um, all, the, all the northern mountains that, that feed to northeast Colorado uh, have been doing pretty good. The mountains that feed into the Arkansas Basin are a little bit below average right now. So when we're looking at, um, you know, our our southern mountains that that feed into there, um, you know, around uh, the Buena Vista area and uh, Leadville and and into that, and the San de Cristos are a little bit below average, but not too far. And so really, when we take a statewide average, uh, especially considering that the past few storms we've had in the past couple of weeks. Uh, we're in a really good situation and, um, you know, we're really starting at, at the critical time period where, you know, if you're above average in November, you know, that's good, but it's not really a big deal. But now we're getting to the point where when you're above average or below average, really, it's a big deal. And so being above average at this time is is really critical. It certainly sounds like overall good news. And I know heading into this winter season, there was certainly some concern about a La Nina, specifically a third straight La Nina, not a great precedent for that here in Colorado. But um, so far, knock on wood, uh, we, we've defied, I would say, expectations. Is that safe to say? Yeah, I would say, uh, especially if you compare it to the last two La Nina falls we've had, we expect, you know, kind of warm and dry conditions for the fall going into the early part of winter. And that is not what we saw for this fall. We've seen consistently cooler temperatures uh, for pretty much all of November and December. We've had overall cool anomalies for most parts of the state, uh, which is definitely not what we were expecting given that third La Nina. And uh, we've had definitely more snow activity uh, than we were initially expecting, especially if you look uh, in the southern part of the state uh, typically, that La Nina pattern may tend to favor more snow for the northern Rockies, which we have seen, but we've seen some activity pretty much on the west side of the Connell Divide um, everywhere across the state. So so this is a time where it's good to be wrong. Yeah, certainly. I, we're all happy about that, I would imagine. <laughs> um, so you, you, I thought something you said was quite interesting. So in November, obviously... You know, th that that number, whether we're above or below average, it can move a lot more because there's a lot less snowpack to compare it to. But here in the month of January, we're starting to get closer and closer towards that median. Um, that peak for a Colorado snowpack, I believe, is in early April, correct? Um, yeah. And so we're really starting to build up some more important snowpack numbers. Um, how important is this kind of recent stretch? You mentioned those last two to three weeks where we've been really busy. How important is it for us to get that uh, big snowpack here um, in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, I'd say it's huge. It's, uh, you know, think of it, I've got my football brain on, but think of it in football. Mm. We've, we've just finished the first half and halftime is over and we're tied or a little bit ahead, right? We still have a lot of game to go, but we're in a good situation. And so that's uh, really important. If we were behind on the snowpack now, you can still make up those deficits, but it's a lot harder, especially because 
we normally get a lot of really big snows. And so getting the big snows and also making up a deficit is really challenging. But when you are at average or above average, um, the, the goal now is to keep moving that train forward on, on that pattern where you're getting big events every week or every couple of weeks to make sure that, that we keep up with that, that line as we move towards the peak in early April. I guess looking at eastern Colorado as well, that's been part of the state that's been, I'd say, the most drought impacted um, heading into the winter, um, specifically northeastern Colorado. But we did have that recent blizzard, which dumped up to as much as an inch, inch and a quarter worth of precipitation on that part of the state. We've seen consistent snowstorms out there as well. Is that making a difference on the drought situation there or not so much? It is. It's easy to really chisel away at some of those deficits during the dry time of year if you're getting big events. So particularly when we're looking at Northeast Colorado or even the Northern Front Range, our average precipitation this time of year is not that much. And so if you get below average, it's not as much of a concern because (laughs) you can't get that much into a deficit. But uh, our below average could have been from, you know, times, wetter times. Now we're, we don't get much on average. So when you're getting these big wet snows that are coming through and bringing a lot of moisture, that's going to make the numbers look like well above average. Um, And that could be a little bit of a, uh, it could misguide you to think that situation is a lot better than it is. Although I would say in this case that because some of the storms we've got have had so much moisture with them, that they are going to make a difference when we're talking the drought situation for uh, parts of Northeast Colorado and the Northern Front Range. What does this mean for the spring? So let's say we've gotten off to a good start here um, through January. Uh, Is there a statistical comparison as to what that might mean for mountain snowfall in February, March, and April as we head into kind of the more peak times of the year? It would be so nice if there was a connection that we could rely on that when we say, Mm. this is what's happened in January, so we know this is what's happened, this is what will happen in February, March, and April. Unfortunately, Colorado does not like to be predictable or give us any indication of what's going to happen in the future Mm. months. Um, I would say as we are exiting out of this La Nina pattern, that will be better news for areas of the Eastern Plains um, that generally tend to miss out on events during the La Nina in late winter and spring. And so now that we won't have to worry about that La Nina pattern, uh, you know, it's really anybody's guess what what could happen. Um, We know that you know, we're, where we're starting off right now is really good, but we need to continue that to really uh, keep ourselves in a decent situation. And so what that is going to mean is that particularly for the mountains, we need these big events to continue. We need that active pattern where we're getting regular uh, fronts moving through and bringing storms, um, especially if there was another atmospheric river or two that that comes on shore and, and dumps a lot of moisture, that that tail end of that can help us uh, in the long run, and, and that would be good. And then as we get into spring, uh, particularly for the lower elevations, you know, we want to see those March snows, those April snows. We, we don't want to transition to hot temperatures. Um, we want that wet pattern to really migrate over the lower elevations as we get into spring, uh, especially those areas that have missed out. Um, now we're looking at Southeast Colorado as being a, an area of concern. And so uh, these are the things that, that we're really gonna need to keep all, all of our state in a healthy situation. I guess one question that comes from all that to me too is, I, I know there's a bit of a saying sometimes that snow breeds more snow, rain breeds more rain, um, that perhaps that the evaporation from the snow and that there's a bit more relative humidity. Uh, you get what I'm saying here? It, yeah. It, it, a, do you believe in that? And B, um, if so, would that matter for the lower elevations in particular for the upcoming spring? 
You know what? It is something that I believe uh, mostly anecdotally because it does seem that when we get into a persistent pattern, it's hard to get out of that pattern. So once we get in this pattern of cold and snow and storm activity, it seems like we you can get kind of stuck there and it takes more to kind of switch that pattern to something else. And so in my head, I think, yes, there's a relationship there that when it's dry, it's easier to stay dry. And when it's wet, it's easier to continue to get those um, that wet pattern to continue. Um, obviously, at some point it switches. Uh, the, the challenge is, is that we have a hard time finding that in the data, which means it's really hard to officially connect those puzzle pieces and assign some predictability to it so that you can say, I know this is going to happen this way and this is what's going to happen to change it. We unfortunately don't have those answers, but um, I do think when we're in this pattern, it, it's a little bit easier to stay in this pattern. Lock on wood that continues. Any other big yes. climate things one way or the other? Uh, we touched on snowpack. We touched on drought. Anything yeah. else big on the local weather scene or climate scene that you're keeping close tabs on? I would say, what are the temperature anomalies going to look as we go through January and February? Um, especially for a lot of areas of our state, February has historically been colder than average. And so uh, we've seen this interesting pattern of of colder in the winters, um, you know, is, is our persistence of cold in um, November and December going to continue through the winter? Um, it would be quite notable if it did. Um, and so those are the kind of things I'm looking at. Hmm. Uh, but I am also overall expecting that um, Southern Colorado has unfortunately seen the pattern of kind of peaking on snowpack too early warming up too early, melting that snowpack too fast. Um, whereas in northern, you know, northern Colorado, we tend to hold on to spring in terms of snow and cold a little bit longer. And, um, you know, is that something that that's going to continue and pan out? Um, you know, I, as anything's a possibility when it comes to weather in our state, but those are kind of the things that I'll be looking at over the next few months. Well, Dr. Becky Bollinger, we appreciate a few minutes of your time and lending us some of your expertise and insight about Colorado's always finicky weather, I think it's safe to say. Uh, but yes. so far, so good here on the winter season, I think, is the uh, top line takeaway, right? Yes, absolutely. Good news. We'll keep rooting that on. But um, thanks so much for your time today and again, um, and, and for giving us some of your valued insights. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.